Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In this video, we discuss cravats, ascots, how to tie them, and what mistakes to avoid. How do you tie an ascot? Here are three ways you can do it. One, this is how you tie the ascot the traditional way. It doesn't matter if you wear the pleats up or down, the only thing that's of importance is that the pleats overlap the knot so the knot stays tighter and you will look great all day. First, the right end needs to be about three to four inches longer than the left one. Second, the right end, the longer end, goes over the left end. What's important here is that the pleated part is actually part of the knot and you want to keep this rather tight. So now the longer end goes back around, as you can see, around, up through the back, and down. And this is how you have the traditional ascot. You may want to open another button on your shirt and then you close it. Once you have it tucked in, you simply adjust it a little bit to your liking and you're done. Basically, there are two ways. You can have one, you can have everything popping out so you see it, or you can have everything tucked in, like so. Personally, I like it tucked in, I like a tight knot, and depending on the shirt I'm wearing, I open one or two buttons from the top. This way, you see more of the ascot, and so, it's more closed. Number two, simple knot. The simple knot is actually really simple because it's just one knot. Both ends are the same length and then you just create one knot. Like so. And you tuck both ends in. For this knot you really have to adjust it and the problem is it's a very loose knot so for the course of the day it will become loose. That can be a problem with a traditional knot, but with a simple knot, it's even more so. Personally, I don't really like the look of it, and I don't recommend this look. The third way to tie an ascot, the modified four in hand. Again, you want it around your neck, and this time you want the right end to be about two inches longer. Now what you do is you tie a regular four in hand tie knot. You can also watch this video where I show you how to do it, but with an ascot, it's more difficult because it is unlined, so you just have the silk. Basically, you take the longer end, get over, then around, you come over again, you go through the back, and now you go through the knot you created and push it through. Now, this has the advantage that you can really adjust it and have it really tight around your neck just like with a regular tie knot. Unlike a tie, the front end will be shorter than the back end. That's exactly what you want, because now with a back end, you come from your neck side and, and basically bring it through from the back. So it comes over and you simply adjust it. So you get some nice pleats and then you put them in your shirt. Adjust it until you like the look and you're basically done. The great thing about this knot is that even if it comes loose, which is very unlikely, you can easily tighten it. It will stay like this all day. It gives you more volume in the knot, so it kind of pops up and flows down nicely. And that's the reason this is my favorite knot. For the modified ascot knot, it's important to untie it the same way you tied it. You bring the long end back and then you pull it up. It's just like a regular tie knot. Um, you can almost lose it the other way, but you always risk that some seams rip because of the strain it puts on it. If you enjoyed this video, sign up to our email newsletter. You'll get these videos right to your inbox. I'll even throw in my free ebook about 15 style mistakes and how you can avoid them. Of course, you should also sign up to our YouTube channel so you never miss a video again. Regular ascots have two of these wide ends. However, they're also half ascot versions where you have one loop like so and one wide end. Personally, I don't like it very much because the knot is not very tight. It 
comes loose all the time, it wanders up on your neck, and it's just not so full, so it looks flat and not three-dimensional like a real ascot. Here's how you tie the half ascot. Wide end, through the loop, and you pull it tight, until you like it, adjust it, and now you just bring this end through the back. Adjust it, and put it in. As you can see, it's not as full, but it's maybe advantageous when it's really warm outside and you want less material on your chest. Now that you know how to tie it, there's really no reason to have a half ascot. Always go with the real thing. It looks better and it's the way gentlemen wear it. So what should you avoid when you wear an ascot? One, never have your shirt buttoned up all the way because then you don't see the ascot, right? Never unbutton more than two buttons because otherwise you can see your chest and it just looks sloppy. Basically, one or two buttons depending on your shirt. Second, avoid cheap silk on your skin or jacket woven silk because it will pull more threads and it will be more uncomfortable. For regular day wear, avoid ascots with any kind of interlining because it's stiffer, makes everything thicker and much more uncomfortable to wear. If you're prone to sweating and it's very hot outside, be careful with your shirts because especially cheap silk has a tendency to bleed off the color and you don't want to ruin your shirts. In that case, simply wear another shirt. You can check out our other shirt guide here to see what other shirts I recommend.